And in this video, I'm going to be checking out, testing, and experimenting with the Intel Trident Z memory and the Threadripper AMD Trident memory and seeing if there's any difference between these two with the Threadripper. And I'm starting now. Welcome back. Thanks for stopping in. I appreciate it. If this happens to be your first time here, consider subscribing. All right, I'm going to get down to the nitty gritty right away with the memories here. And then I'm going to get into some tests that I've been working on for the last couple weeks and show you what I found out. So I believe there really is no difference between these two memory chips. They got almost an identical part number and they even use the same timing frequencies, the whole nine yards. I think they only put it on here, uh, the AMD logo, sticker, whatever you want to call it with its own part, just to help people out saying, hey, this memory works best with the Threadripper. There really isn't much of a price difference between the two. Depending on where you go, it's a couple bucks here and there. So I don't think it's anybody trying to take advantage of anyone on the pricing. I think it's just there to help you out. Now, speaking of finding the memories, you know, you could probably use any DDR4 in your system build if you're using DDR4. However, I recommend checking the QVL, the, uh, blah, 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 the qualified vendors list is what that stands for. And basically the manufacturer has worked on what memory would work best with their stuff. So I definitely recommend checking out the QVL, see what works great with your particular brand and motherboard. You might be able to get better overclock speeds with it, better stability, those kind of things. So definitely check that out. However, there is one thing I did that greatly improved the memory performance on both the Intel and the AMD. So keep an eye out in the video. I'll talk about it here later on, on exactly what I did and how you guys can do it too. And now let's jump in to the tests here to see the differences. All right, I'm gonna pull it up here, stick it here for you. So the first test here is on the AM, ah, excuse me, the Intel memory. They ran two different tests. I went to the performance test and also ran the pass mark on this here memory. And as you can see, and this is just default with the Intel on the um, Threadripper using the Asus Zenith Extreme motherboard. Now the memory actually tested pretty good. So I was pretty impressed with that. It wasn't too bad. The only area that was kind of eh was the latency. Um, as you can see 76 there on the pass mark score it was kind of low. Um, overall the memory score is 2002. Now I just wanted to try something. I wanted to manually input the timing to see if there's any difference. So let's pull that up here real quick. All right. Here's our memory timings manually inputted. Now, uh, it was close. I mean, the numbers are just slightly lower. I wasn't able to overclock it to the 3333 default, which that's what I stuck in there. I didn't do anything special. I just put the memory in the motherboard and I just kept taking it up until the system would no longer boot, you know, essentially. So I was able to go all the way up to 3333, no problem. Um, I was able to take this one up to uh, 32, it looks like, or 3,000, 3,000 it looks like. And, uh, but with the main, you would think there would be a little bit more of a difference, being as it was a little bit slower, but with the tighter timings on here, it actually, the performance wasn't too bad. The latency, though, was exactly the same, 76 for 76, overall score, 1987. All right, so let's jump into the... AMD memory and see what kind of numbers that gets me. All right, here's a side by side. Uh, the left side's the Intel, the right side's the AMD. Um, it was a couple points higher. Latency was one point shorter, but I don't think that was because of the two different. Uh, the, these uh, memory can fluctuate a little bit between when it was made. There's a date, manufactured date. They usually recommend trying to get it from the same month when you're using uh, all your channels. So that's probably all it is, is that these are two completely separate months when they're manufactured. 
Um, but overall, 2009 to 2002, there really wasn't no difference. Still in the 65 percentile range. And all right, so let's check out. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> all right, so now this is with both memories installed into the system. Had no problem doing it. Even let me take it to 3333. Uh, no, it didn't. <laughs> it uh, let me take it to 32 uh, for the memory speed. And as you can see here, it is Intel on the left, AMD in the middle, and both RAM chips on the right side and memory latency is 76 um, overall score 2008 to the original score of 2002 and the AMD score of 2009 um, so it's all pretty much coming out to be exactly the same the huge difference here the huge difference was right here after the BIOS update I updated the BIOS on the system there we go I updated the BIOS on the system, and this is where it made a huge difference. I was able to run it at a faster speed of 3333. The latency dropped down to 72, and the overall score of 2160. You know, that was the biggest Im performance impact was just updating the BIOS. You know, the new, uh, the new BIOS from Asus made the overclockability and the memory stability that much better that I was able to get faster clock speed out of it and better uh, latency so not bad glad I did that looking forward to more BIOS updates never thought I'd actually say I'm looking forward to BIOS updates you know about 10 years ago that had been like ah <laughs> alright guys so that's a scoop on it there's really no difference I believe it is the exact same memory chip just with a different sticker on the box so you could pick either one you want you know if you find a better deal on one over the other it doesn't matter go ahead and pick that one just keep it together get as many chips as you want to fill your slots and call it good if you want better performance though and better stability do the BIOS update that seems to be where the huge difference is and I've already updated the BIOS and made a video so if you want to know how to do it I'll put a card up here or over here <laughs> and check that card out on how to update the BIOS. It's really simple and pretty much uh, trouble free. I really like ASUS's BIOS update procedure. So, well, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if it happens to be your first time here, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys on my next crazy adventure.